you've seen my previous videos, you've noticed I have a Shelby GT500, but I also have this Jeep. This is my daily driver. It's a 2010 Jeep Wrangler Sahara two-door, and I've had it for about nine years now. I bought it brand new, and I've done a few things to it, but nothing huge. I don't have huge tires on it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I've had this for nine years. Daily driver. It's only got 40,000 miles on it because I live pretty close to work, and Whenever I go out with the family, we're always on the bicycle. Um, yeah, it served me pretty well. I bought it before I had kids and before I had dogs, so it was it was a nice vehicle for two of us. But uh, as the years went by, things have changed, and I've done some things to it, and I'd like to go over those right now. Uh, in no particular order here, I can tell you that I plastic dipped the stock Sahara wheels. They were just uh, uh, aluminum. They were so uh, maybe they're painted actually. Um, 18 inch wheels, plastic those black. I thought that just looked a lot better uh, on the Jeep. That's all black, black wheels. I've always liked that look. So I did that. Uh, I also put the wheel spacers on there. You might be able to see those in there. Um, I honestly can't even remember the brand of this. They might have been Spider Tracks wheel spacers. So those give it a better stance. They stick out a little. So that's, that's better than the stock. Um, I like the way that looks. Uh, also, something that happened maybe 10,000 miles ago is my front right brake rotor locked up. And it kept lock, locking up while I was driving and it, it just never let go. So I was thinking, do I buy a new caliper? Did I say my rotor locked up? I meant my caliper. Uh, the caliper locked up. So I was trying to research brake systems. You all right? Okay. Are you okay? It's okay, bud. You'll be okay. It's okay. And I went with a big brake kit, but I went with the Mopar big brake kit, which was a lot less expensive than some of the other ones. You can kind of see under here that the rotor shield, you could see the larger brake rotor sticking out. So you can tell it's bigger. And that looks like fries. Uh, it's also... And these are here. It's also two piston calipers and it also comes with a larger brake booster uh, and extended brake lines so I put those on there and the braking performance is much better so that's a good upgrade uh, and if I ever get big tires it'll be uh, it'll be nice to have that something else huh the tires have rocks and another thing I did because this this Jeep did not have a trailer package towing package when I bought it I bought a it's a Kurt manufacturing uh, hitch, and I also bought the wiring kit. I think it's the Mopar wiring kit, and I can hook a trailer up to it. I also have a deep one here as well. Uh, another thing, what else did I do here? Um, tint the windows. There's something I did. Uh, legal tint that's not blacked out or anything. It's pretty clean looking. Uh, stock suspension, except for a leveling kit. I have a Terraflex leveling kit. It's two inches in the front and it's uh, one inch in the back. And overall, I think it has a pretty good stance for being on stock tires. Oh, I got some plastic dip peeling right there. But yeah, it's a decent looking uh, height. Um, okay, so now the elephant in the room. I'm going to talk about one more thing. Probably definitely the largest addition to this vehicle as well as the most expensive. Uh, actually, before I get to that, one more thing. These are crappy pieces of vinyl that I put on there, and those are probably coming off soon. It's just kind of kind of corny and kind of childish. Okay, so let's talk about my license plate, and let's talk about that intercooler right there. Uh, yes, this Jeep is turbocharged. It has a Prodigy Performance 58 millimeter turbo system on it. Uh, I did install this myself. It's usually what I do. I always do the work myself. And that is what necessitated the leveling kit. It had to have more clearance in the front between the engine block and the front drive shaft, or I'm sorry, the front axle and the engine because the downpipe off the turbo would hit. And in fact, even with the leveling kit on there, it does rub sometimes if I come to a quick break, quick stop, and I have somebody else in the car and there's some more weight in the vehicle. It does kind of rub on the drive shaft. That's where it rubs. But uh, as you'll see, let me pop the hood open here. 
doing this with one hand. I want to see in there. You want to see in there? You can get up there. What? Go up there. Oops, cutting my uh, liner there. Hey, can you get me up there? Sorry about the uh, dirty engine. It's been a long winter. But yeah, I have a 3.8 V6. This is not the newer Pentastar 3.6 liter. Dad, can you pull me up? I'll put you up after the video, okay? So I think it's that leveling kid is the reason why he can't get up there. But. So this turbo is 58 millimeter, like I said. It's a uh, Garrett turbo owned by Honeywell. Uh, Prodigy Performance, they sent the tune with it as well. I can honestly tell you that the tune is spot on. No complaints about it. I've driven with this turbo on here for roughly 20,000 miles. I've had it for, I've had it since 2013. Early 2013 is when I bought this turbo system and installed it that spring. And here it is 2018 and I still have it. Five years. I probably have more than 20,000 miles on it. Uh, it does make probably another 100 horsepower. I have never dynoed it. I intend to, but the vehicle makes 202 horsepower stock. Oil's in there. I think it may. That's what it was, right? It's been a long time. Oil's in there. Oil's in there. 202 horsepower. And this turbo, I don't have a gauge on it. That's another thing I'd like to add to it. But I think this thing's making probably six or seven pounds of boost. It's probably making 300 horsepower now. And I will tell you the torque is probably about 400. Okay, let's go for a ride. Um, closest thing I could do to compare it is, it's a 3.8 pushrod V6, and so is a Buick Grand National. So it's like a stock Grand National engine. I can only imagine, I've never driven in a Grand National, but I can only imagine this is the same power band and torque curve. Uh, it's a four speed automatic transmission. Uh, originally, this engine transmission is out of a Chrysler minivan from the 80s, and it's obviously turned to go the long ways. And it's not really upgradable. There, there's there's one company that has a upgrade transmission. We'll see uh, if they can handle more power. But uh, Prodigy does sell a larger. Well, they sell they sell a kit with a different spring for the wastegate, and I think it takes up to 12 pounds of boost and could get it up to 350 rear wheel horsepower. They only sell you that with a manual transmission because the automatic in this thing is so weak. So that's a regret, but way back in 2010, the Pentastar wasn't even on the horizon. So uh, that would be very cool to have a Pentastar with a turbo kit. But it does move. Like I said, it's got 300 horsepower roughly. Uh, I've I've kept up with her or pulled on vehicles that this Jeep has no business keeping up with or pulling on. Um, I'm not going to tell you the gas mileage is better uh, because anytime you get on the gas with turbo, you're eating gas. So if you don't look at the gas pedal and you drive it like a normal human being, it's it's okay. I mean, it's still not it's not 20 miles a gallon, that's for sure. I will say it will get over 20 if you're on a long road trip. If you're, I drove to St. Louis one time. I think I got 22 on the way there, 21 on the way back. But that's just driving like a grandma and really bye trying. Bye-bye, girl, bro. No, not go by. Uh, that's just trying to get awesome gas mileage out of it. So, I don't know if you can see. The downpipe off the turbo right here, that goes down between the engine block and the front differential. Way down there, it's very hard to see. And that's the reason for the leveling kit. Uh, I think that's going to conclude it. I don't think I have any more mods that I can remember. At least nothing worth talking about. But uh, that's my daily driver. I intend to do some things to it soon. Uh, the weather's getting nice. It's pretty damn cold out right now. But uh, we got some things coming. I actually have some toys in the garage that are going to be bolted onto this soon. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more videos. Thank you. Say bye, YouTube.